Welcome to Sports Line, brought to you by Ace Hardware, New Kensington, AKLC Studios in Leechburg, Arnold Furniture, Fifth Avenue, Buffalo Bills, New Kensington, Fazio's Deli and Meats in Arnold, Highland Tire, Toronto and Natrona Heights, Matteo's Pizza and Subs, Brackenridge Heights, Resevich Family Funeral Homes, Lower Burl in Arnold, 380 Discount Warehouse, Murraysville, Tower Auto in Blonox, and Westmoreland Insurance Services of New Kensington. It's good to have you with us. Bob Tattern here along with Mike Pavlik as we uh, bring Sportsline Trivia your way. And if you're like the two of us, <laughs> what, what kind of a syndrome can we give or, you know, give a title to as to what happened to the Pirate fans yesterday? Yeah, that guy was tough. That was hard. Oh, my gosh. A sleepless night for me anyway. I, it, stuff like that bothers me. Shouldn't let it. But, folks, if you watch the Pirate game, and you saw uh, a couple of the replays, calls that didn't go our way, uh, fan interference and what have you. We, we had, had fan interference. We had uh, two different replay, a replay in the first inning that didn't go their way. Was the catcher blocking the plate? Was he safe? Was he out? Should Neil Walker have been running with his head down toward home instead of peeking out the right field, too, was another thing that yeah. was an issue. Yeah. But they, they did, did enough to beat themselves, too. So they, well, they, they're, they are equally as culpable. But that was what a poorly umpired game yesterday. And then I actually saw some of them. Being at the game, it was hard. I actually saw some of those pitches that were called strikes, and it's, the ball was on the ground to Martin just about. Mm. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, but, I know, wish they would leave that little box up and show some, every pitch. Some of the broadcasts do. Some, yeah, they, some yeah, do. Some do. And some don't, but uh, it, it doesn't seem to get in the way. And on HD TV, you just push that thing yeah, off to the side. Exactly. There's room for it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's something Mike and I were debating on the way up. We were talking about when the <clears throat> disputed calls are reviewed by a group somewhere in New York, mm -hmm. okay, do they already know what the call was before they make a judgment? In other words, are we going to overturn an umpire's call, or are we going to agree? I think Mike and I are in accordance that we don't feel that the umpire, the, the people watching should know what the umpire's call was. I think that kind of uh, slants it toward we better stick together if it's if it's that close. Yeah, I worry about that a little bit. But, and then and, and, and they are umpires that are making the calls that, that, that are actually on field crews that aren't working a series at that time, fly to New York and sit in the room and actually are the ones that are making the calls. It's not an independent um, uh, arm of Major League Baseball, just a, a replay official, maybe retired umpires, which I think might be more the way to go. Yeah. But that's, this is the way they've done it this year, and I guess we'll see what happens. But, you know, it's, you know, it's, it, it helped the Pirates in the ninth inning. I've never been in a crowd of 35,000 people chanting, safe, 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 <laughs> safe, like I was yesterday. It's like, yeah, I think they heard you. <laughs> Folks, when you give us a call at 724-236-0430, you have an opportunity to, uh, after your conversation with us, to give us your opinion. Uh, we'll give you a trivia question if you want. If you get the answer correct, we'll have a prize coming out to you. So let's take a look at uh, being eligible for uh, the winning of a prize. First of all, you can only win at your household address but every other week. That's number one. Somewhere up there. There we go. There it comes. Um, something happened. <laughs> All right, we'll do it again. You can win, but every other week here on the program, your household address is scrutinized. It's very closely okay. also, by the way, it is. Uh, let me think now. You can... Grand uh, Salami and Mystery Profile, you can, you can win, but once... Per month. One or the other. One or the other. Not big both. that's big one. Mystery profile, Grand Salami, you can win but once per month. Grand, mystery profile, you can only try you can only try once a month. Once per month. So and, the, yeah, those, the, there, there and are those. The multiple choice. This is course. gonna be like a test. It's good to go now. We'll see how we did. <laughs> 
Yep, you can win uh, one or the other once a month and try the mystery profile once in a calendar month. Also, uh, the multiple choice questions, we give you 15 seconds to come up with an answer. The Grand Salami is at 20, the mystery profile. We go as quickly as possible, clue by clue. First time callers get more than one prize and we give you the answers on my website, doubledribblebob.com. Go there and look for trivia. Also, the fan facts reveal some things that we sometimes use, fan facts and the sports trivia. Also, my radio show comes up every Saturday morning, WAVL. They're 910 on the AM dial. It's all on sports history, sports nostalgia. We're going to take a break. Mike and I will come back with caller number one right after this. All right. He needs 10 seconds. Right. To, to refurbish. Could I, again, quickly in 10 seconds. Yeah, go ahead. I have two signings. I know we have callers, so I'd like to do this now. Um, the Pirates apparently have signed their number one pick, Cole Tucker, the shortstop out of Arizona, $1.8 million. Um, he was the 24th pick in the first round on Thursday night, so he's in the fold. The Steelers have also signed Martavis Bryant, who was their fourth round pick, leaving only second round pick Stephon Tewitt and third round pick Dre Archer to go. They had signed Ryan Shazier, their, fir Shazier, their first round pick last week. And as I mentioned to Bob before um, we uh, went on the air tonight, in, in kind of a strange twist for Steeler fandom out now, with only two draft picks left to sign, still $6.7 million under the salary cap. Nope. I believe it is safe to say now <laughs> that the salary cap crunch for the Steelers is indeed over, so they can sign some people to an extension if they like. Okay. All right. Let's take the break. We're coming back. Caller number one right after this. Ernie's Tavern on Brackenridge Avenue in Brackenridge has 225 Budweiser and Bud Light bottles every Tuesday and Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Stop by Ernie's Tavern and enjoy a cold Bud Light. Here we go. This is where you get the absolute freshest deli meats and cheeses, Fazio's Italian Deli in Arnold. At Fazio's, you're getting only the best and freshest selection. Fazio's has its own bakery and offers you fresh baked bread, rolls, pastries, and more. Pick up individual salads to go. Italian sausages, hoagies, custom-made sandwiches, even party trays for your next get-together. Freshness and quality every time at Fazio's Italian Deli, Leishman and Dre in Arnold. There once was a hungry road that wouldn't let drivers get very far. It wore out their tires, forcing them to buy new ones. Then along came the Michelin Man who proved the right tire changes everything. With long-lasting tires in place, those drivers were back on the road to saving money. Drive longer with the Michelin Defender Tire, backed by a 90,000-mile limited warranty. Michelin, a better way forward. Available at Highland Tire under the bridge in Toronto and Freeport Road in Trona Heights. Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Westmoreland provides a full range of coverage for all of your automobile needs. Westmoreland Insurance Services putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call 724-337-3557. Mogi's Irish Pub on Leechburg Road in Lowerboro has 16 ounce Bud Light aluminum bottles for just $2.50 during all Pirates games. Stop in a Mogi's Irish Pub on Leechburg Road and enjoy a cold Bud Light. Here we go. And when you shop at Tower Auto Sales for your next pre owned vehicle, three indoor show, uh, showrooms are there for you to uh, peruse. It's a full service facility with an experienced staff. They have all makes and models available, including Lexus products. That's their specialty. Tower Auto Sales, just buy it. 412-828-6202 is the phone number. Ask for Mike Fanto. Okay. Before we go to the first call, Lamar, hold on one second. I just got this real quick. Emilio Bonifacio for the Cubs will be in the lineup tonight. He's leading off. After the first nine games of this season, of which six of them were against the Pirates, Bonifacio was hitting 452. <laughs> now his average is 230. He's at 234 cents. And they asked Lou and Hurdle if the Pirates had found a way to, got, to get him out. And Hurdle's reply was, someone has. <laughs> so I guess we'll, we'll see. see how that goes. We'll see how yes. it goes. 
All right, Limo Man, welcome to the program. Good evening. Hello, how are you today? Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, first of all, Don Zimmer passed away last week. Yeah. I was very sad to hear about that limo. Uh, one of our callers here, Lou, um, Lou DeFazio from Verona, years ago, when we were still in Arnold, dropped me off a signed racing program to me by Don Zimmer that he had gotten at the track in Florida oh, that he God. would frequent with Don Zimmer and Frank Pooley, the old Major League umpire. umpire. Well, yeah. I believe this also since passed away. And uh, Lou brought me that, and I, I dug that out when I heard that Zimmer had died, yeah. and I thought that my only connection with Don Zimmer, and it was a nice thing for Lou to do. And Gail Sayers and Joan Namath are both 71 years old. There you go. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. I'm 75. That's hard to believe. You don't look it. I lost eight pounds since I left Bel Air Nursing Home. Hmm. No. It was terrible over there. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to mess up Tony because he's probably up next. I'll take uh, trivia. Which yeah, Michael? What would you like there? You like a multiple choice there, Limo? Yes. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get you a winner today. What Major League Baseball franchise was the first to appear in three World Series? The first baseball team in three World Series. Was it the Chicago Cubs, the New York Yankees, the Philadelphia A's, or the Boston Red Stockings? Cubs, Yankees, A's, Red Stockings. Uh, maybe the Red Sox? No, that's not it, Limo. The answer is the Chicago Cubs, who actually appeared in the World Series in 1906, 1907, and 1908. 1908 was the last one that they won, by the way. Right. And they were back in the World Series, I believe, in 1935 and maybe in the 40s at some point in there. But that's it. They, uh, well, we all know about the Cubs drought. Thanks, Limo. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, Tony, you're up. Go ahead. Hi, guys. How are you? Good, John. Oh, that game yesterday. Yeah, that was something, wasn't it? Now, you're telling me that uh, when they uh, go to New York, there's uh, ex-umpires or a crew that has it, uh, have a game, right? It is current on-field umpires are, are, are calling the replays. Okay. That's, in other words, it's the blind leading the blind. Pretty much. Okay. Well, I still think he was safe at home. No. <laughs> it looks like his uh, everybody right in foot Pittsburgh in. agrees left, with you. Uh, leg was folded from and my uh, hit from my the vantage point in section uh, three eleven, which was on the plate, and then he tagged him on the thing. But uh, I don't know how you call him out, but they did. I can then, see his foot. And then the umpires, I think, have to time her in the wrong position to see anything. Well, uh, on that Marte, that was so ridiculous. The hand was in there, and then uh, you kind of do. 1,003, then the tag came down. Yep. Uh, this, this umpire is you know, almost as bad as some of the teams that are playing the game. <laughs> it, it is pathetic. I mean, if we're playing cricket, let's get the big paddles, you know, and play cricket. If the boys are going to call strikes and hit the ground. You know what I mean? And I, I, I don't know. I, I just hate. <laughs> it's Tony, better I... to watch a pirate sometimes. Bad as it, but, but when you get that kind of umpire, oh my God, how can you pay these guys? Where did these guys come from? I was talking to Mike here before the program began tonight. My question was on obvious calls that are, you know, that they, they don't overturn or make a mistake with. Doesn't the league office or wouldn't the league office have a review board of their own to say this umpire, that's about the fourth time this week, you know, that he screwed something up and they take him out of rotate. They got to do something with him. My, okay, Bob, my boy t tells me that he says there's umpires who are no longer umpires because they do have a, re a review board. Right. And they do look at him, but they won't do nothing during the season. It, it'll be after the season and they'll get rid of him. Well, well Right now, I think they're at the point if they got rid of everybody, they sure there won't be nobody umpire next year. <laughs> you might be right. Well, what's your, you thought, what's your thought about having current umpires actually be the ones that are doing the replays? I, now, I don't know if that's more of a – is that going to be a one-year thing just so that you, they can get them to understand the process of what's going on back there? But I, I, I like the way the NFL does it, of having actual league employees 
um, in the rules department, the supervisors well, make these calls. Now, even, if it's I mean, even if it's retired umpires that were retired solid umpires. Like, even, yeah. even you know, Bruce Fremming rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, but the guy was a good umpire. You know, to me, that would be the type of guy I'd want in there, and that would be your job. I mean, you, you live in New York, and that's your job for the six months of the year. Well, what do you, have, you know, what you got to ask yourself is, uh, being an umpire, period, or are you going to favor the umpires? Well, that's because, what we were talking because about. you don't want to, you know, make them look bad or overturn. Well, they, you know what? They don't have to make them look bad. They look bad enough themselves. But well, you know, yeah, overturn the throw. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I would say, you know, maybe get some guys that know the game inside out. There's nothing to do when umpiring in that, and uh, you know, have them make the calls. Right. Uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, and they but, can have, and they could have, and I figure it this way: you could have a somebody that works uh, as, as a higher up. In, 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 the, in, in the major league office, be a rules interpreter guy that could be there. That if you needed a rule, needed a ruling on a rule, right. you go to him and yeah. say, you know, I mean, "Hey, I need help." Somebody with this. that's but, you know, like I said, knowledgeable, uh, but has nothing to do with uh, you know the major leagues at all. Independent is you know, but uh, you know knows the game. Maybe maybe was a coach. Maybe was a coach in college, or something like that. You know, and uh, I, I would rather have that. But. Uh, if they keep going the way they're going, uh, <laughs> I don't know if they'll have this next year. Well, the walk and, and, the, and talking about the Walker play, they had two different ways out there. First of all, and, and again, being at the ballpark, you know, you, one, one of the new things you look for when I saw the ball go up into right field, my, I, I had a good line on it because I was uh, I, I was looking straight down the left field line. So I, my first look was when I saw the ball go out the right field, I said that's not deep enough. That was the first thought that came through my head. I looked at third base and I saw him tagging up and, and my line of sight was perfect that as the tag was coming that LaCroix was set up with his foot in front of home plate before Braun caught the ball, let alone when he threw it, before he had it. He did what a, what a catcher does, Tony. He set himself up in the position to put his left leg down solid to block home plate so the guy couldn't get it. You know, what a catcher should do, unlike this stupid rule that they have. But since they have a stupid rule, how in the world did he get away with that? Well, uh, I, you know, I, that, uh, that I don't know. Maybe because it took Walker an hour and a half to get the home plate. Well, because he was watching the ball. Well, he, and he was running like he thought they wasn't going to make a play on him. Yeah, and I, I mean, didn't, Braun is a good outfielder, and he has above average arm. He's okay? a good player. Uh, now, I Say mean, what you will. Uh, it's, it, I can't believe that what I was watching. One hop to the catcher, he spun around to make a tag, and Walker wasn't there yet. Wasn't there he yet. was. He was more surprised on that than anything. I, I almost think that he called him out because because the ball did beat him, but he didn't get the tag on, and and you know. No. He didn't get the tag on. You could see his leg came through. He knocked his leg out of the way. That's right. And, he, and then the tag he, hit him in the thigh, and on the left thigh. He had his left leg folded. And it was and it was it was textbook slide too. He came in with a straight leg, just like your top, knocked that catcher's leg out of there. Yeah, and, and he did. And nobody got but, run over. Hey, and nobody got hurt. But and, see, all that aside, not to manufacture one lousy exactly. run. Exactly. How many you know, times this, do we have the bases loaded? This is what I, I totally hate about the Pirate Manager and some of the players. Now, I know Gabby, has, uh, Gabby Hayes Sanchez was up to bat, and everybody was back for the double play. Even on your own, say, hey, I'm going to try to bunt one down first base. If he does, all right, it, they could crawl in from third base sure, to score sure. a one run. Well, but nobody takes it on himself to do anything on that team. And the difference, anything. In, the difference in that game, Tony, was the one chance that the Brewers had to score, they did. Yes. That they, yes. Even, even, though we, even though the idiot fan who should be banned from that stadium for life for reaching over to grab that ball, um, I got into a discussion with a security guard yesterday asking why he wasn't thrown out of the game. I said, what is your job if it's not to remove fans who interfere with play? He goes, are you questioning me? I said, yeah, I'm questioning you. I said, what is your job? He but, goes, do you want to talk to somebody? I said, no, I'm talking to you. What is your job? Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, how can that guy still be sitting there with the baseball in his hands? And, and basically, I'm going to say cost them the game. The Pirates cost themselves the game. We all know that. But what the Brewers do, they got that break, they moved them over, and they got him in. Bing, bang, that quick, and they got a run. Now, the best part about that, if you've seen it, you know, if you look at the rule, the guy stopped halfway down to first base. He did, and he turned he, he around. Thought it was he wasn't even at first base no. when the man grabbed the ball. He should not have been on second base. The umpire should have only – now, first can a base. replay look That's at that? Right. Can a replay say, hey, he stopped, look at the replay to see where he was, to see how you're going to place your runner? You probably, you probably can't look at that on a replay. But 
let's say that the uh, let's say the manager can't uh, you know ask for a replay. But how about an umpire asking for a replay? Are they allowed? Sure, they absolutely. Are. That's the umpires, right. The umpires can request a replay any time. I mean, you have you know you have the home plate umpire and three other umpires on there. You try and tell me nobody's Tony, seen that. He stopped and took one step back to home plate, thinking. Well, it was he a thought foul it was a foul ball. ball. That's why he thought it was a foul. And I'll tell you what, I can't believe it stayed fair either. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you another thing. Uh, on the McCutcheon's double, he didn't run. That's right, and that's bull. That is so. If you're an MVP, you're going full blast. All right, if he catches it, so what? You stop halfway around first base and go back. No, I read, if he I, doesn't, he should have been standing on third I, base. I couldn't, and again, like I said, I, be, being there, and you can see where the fielder is, and when he hit the ball, I thought he was going to catch it, but I'm not down there running, and if he would have busted it out of the box, that's a triple. And oh, easy. Easy, because number one, after the ball got past me, it sort of bounced towards right field a yeah. little bit. Yeah. I mean, he should have been standing on third with no problem. No. But he stopped running. I mean, he slowed down like it was going to get. That uh, I do not go for that. I don't either. No, I'm not going to make you an know, excuse. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to make an excuse. But I, I read some that some people said after the game that were watching on TV, and I said, I, like I said, I wasn't that he had reached reached down grabbing his knee or something at some point uh, earlier yeah, in the okay. game. Well, I don't you know. know. Maybe he's got maybe he's got a little hitch in there. I don't know. But that's well, I don't know. That's possible. That but you know, maybe he made a fool of himself, and that's a good. Ex- Something to you know, the old line get away with it. Move. But uh, I, but I see that more than once on a Pirates. You know, especially Marte. I mean, you know, the guy quits halfway down first base, and and, and I'm telling you, I mean, this year alone, I've seen first basemen drop the ball. Mm-hmm. You oh, know, sure. I mean, they can pick it up. You're standing on it, but but they need the point. You know, if you're flying down there and as fast as he is, the guy drops the ball, you might be safe. But they they eased in the first. I, I you know I. Well, we don't know what discipline is. You know, I, I don't care. I, I, I can see a, a pitcher. In fact, I see some of the pitchers run down harder than, than Mark Day does. Oh, well, yeah, Martin. especially Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, Tony, I mean, it's, you know, it is, uh, we're, we're running late. we got to get the trivia. Uh, I don't even know if I want to do it tonight. Oh, good. Yes, you do. Oh, oh look at good. Oh, dude, great. Bob, I'm making Bob happy. Uh, he was crying last week. Oh. I don't know. He said, I'm going to. I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy the show if I keep winning. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. He's like the Boston Celtics. He is. Yeah, From yeah. The, uh, I'm talking yeah, about the early days of pro basketball. Nobody wanted to play the Celtics, so they shoot them out of the league. Right, right. Shoot them out of the league. How uh, about me doing uh, uh, multiple choice? Ooh. All right. No, wait a minute now. Okay. Yeah. Just, now, you want to give I, it away, I don't want right? to be counted for this because I, I want to give this prize away. To the next, uh, I don't care, uh, female that calls, any age. Any age. Any age. Okay. Would that be all right? Yeah. Okay, then I'll be eligible next year, next week? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's if you're getting this me. away and we, and we have your word on it, your yes. word is as good as gold. It is gold. All right. You have question number five next in rotation. Who holds the record of most career walk-off home runs in regular season play? And here are your four options. Jim Tomey, Stan Musial, Jimmy Fox, Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle. Well, you're eligible next week either way. The answer is Jim Uh, Tomey. It's wrong. Jim Tomey had 13... Walk-off home runs, one more than a whole group of others. Most of them are retired or deceased. Or well, I thought Mickey Mantle. I thought, well, okay, but I mean, I thought he was uh, leading that walk-off. Well, okay, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe yeah. I'm wrong, but no, well, I, I didn't mean that he had more than Tommy. But I'm just saying, I thought he was the leader. You know, at one time he probably was. Tommy probably just caught him recently before he retired. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Tommy's retired, isn't he? I mean, he keeps showing up someplace on somebody's bench. I don't. <laughs> he think may, he's hey, hey, don't be surprised. He don't show up with Pittsburgh. Yep, he's not playing. I end up back with the Phillies. They can get him for a buck two fifty. They'll, they'll take him. Yeah. All exactly. right. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks, All right, Tony. we got to go. Bye. And Mr. Tampa Bay is going to join us when we return. Stay with us. Sportsline trivia continues after this. Since 1914, the local area has relied on the Resevich family of funeral homes in deepest times of need. 
The Rusevich family is the oldest established name in the funeral profession of the AK Valley, now 100 years strong and still doing things right. Its reputation and unquestionable service now continues with a fourth generation. The Rusevich family of funeral homes, Fifth Avenue Arnold and Leechburg Road in Lower Borough. AKLC Studios LLC is the place for your video and multimedia needs. Let AKLC Studios produce a unique television commercial for your business. At your location or in our studios, we're here to meet your needs. Ever want your own television show? Let us show you how. AKLC Studios LLC can even tape your special events and weddings. Whatever your multimedia need, call AKLC Studios LLC in Leechburg today. Professional quality at hometown prices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. 380 Auction and Discount Warehouse, Route 380, Murraysville. Automotive supplies, groceries, housewares, pet supplies. All at discount prices. Sofas, dining tables, recliners, dressers and desks, lamps and end tables. All at discount prices. Yard and landscaping supplies, special catalog orders, mattresses with full warranties. All at discount prices. School supplies, tools, paint, toiletries, model cars, toys. All at discount prices. Get to 380 Auction and Discount Warehouse today, Route 380, Murraysville. And folks, whenever we have an opportunity, we're going to have, I'm sure, somebody tonight take a shot at our mystery profile. Uh, one of the most talked about features here in the program, sponsored by Matteo's Pizza and Subs, Brackenridge Heights. Great food, whether it's uh, their pizza, their subs, their signature sandwich, the Iron Man hoagie, everything with fresh ingredients, and that could be the reason. People just love them. Matteo's Pizza and Subs. Give them a call, 724-904-7312. All right, we are back. I want to thank um, Bill for holding on. Bill. Hey, guys. Hello? Good yep. evening. Good to hear you. Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? Pretty good. Well, thank you. Right. Um, I want to talk about the parts. Sure. Um, Yesterday was a disgrace to the Major League Baseball. I mean, the umpires and everybody. But if I was that fan, I would have done the same thing and picked the ball up. All right, so, Bill, okay. before we can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We're, we're having a tough time. Your, your, your telephone is cutting in and out. If you can find you a, there? a, a near an open there? window or an open door. Go ahead. Hold on, sir. Are you there? Yeah. Sounds better. I, I, I heard your question, uh, uh, but it, you know, yesterday was pretty much a disgrace. But the, the guy can't pick the ball up, though, because that, that just, like I said, he should be, he should be thrown out of the game, and, she, and he should not be allowed back in. And I, and I just wonder, you know, do the Pirates know exactly I, I just, who that is? I, just, and they didn't I disagree with that. It's a baseball game, okay? Any, anywhere you go, it's the same way. The ball but is in I'm, play. I, I am tired of the Pirate fans complaining about the officials. It's the players. The yeah. Pirates had faced the Rulers twice yesterday with one out, and they struck. They can't score with one. And the guy was out of home play. I don't know where you guys are seeing that. Was, he was safe. He was out. They weren't checking. They were seeing people off the plate. I'm not going to argue with these guys. I like the Pirates, but if they don't win three out of four against the Cubs, they're not going nowhere. I'll tell you what, Tampa. What, do we have a four-game series? Yeah, they, they have their next 26 games leading up to the 4th of July weekend are against these teams. The Cubs, the Marlins, the Reds, the Rays, the Mets, the Diamondbacks, and the Phillies. Those teams are a combined 53 games under 500. Their winning percentage is 439, which if you put that into a 162-game season over the next 26 games, the Pirates are playing a 71-91 and 91 team. If they don't win at least 18 of these next 26, and I say they need to win 20 of these next 26, then you could pretty much put, you know, throw the, start throwing the dirt on top of them that that's going to be it. This is a big opportunity for them right now, and you're 100% right. They need to get their heads out of their behinds, and it's time to start playing baseball. They, they've had enough excuses the whole season. They've had, you know, what, whatever their excuses have been. Marte, to me, is the biggest culprit in all this. And now you get injuries. Now you got Cole in the DL. By the way, he did throw today in the outfield, so that he's not completely shut down. He threw the ball off flat ground, so hopefully that's a start. But I, I can't disagree with anything you say. They, they got to get going, and they got to win three out of four against the Cubs to start it. I think Andre McCutcheon should be benched tonight for that as to running the bases yesterday. Mm. 
Well, you, your telephone is so bad. Where are you? I'm in Washington County. Oh, Washington County. Well, that shouldn't be an issue. I've talked to people in Europe, and it works. I, you know, it's, that's not the issue. Isn't that at all? But uh, well, it uh, is line it, of sight. Yeah. All right. I don't know if you guys can hear, but that's my home phone. I'm in a bad area altogether down here. Uh, we have no internet or nothing down here, and uh, but I just wanted to call and say the Pirates are going to win the next. As long as they're out of the next 26 games, they're going 10, and the season's over with. And Polanco, people need to understand this. No Huntington just said a little while ago on Channel 4 News that great Polanco will not be up this season at all because he won't have enough of bat. They want him to bat between 500 and 750 at bat before he comes up. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, Bill, we're going to have to let you go because I can't hear you. We, it's, it's, we can't. Bill, Bill just said to back every other word. That's 100% correct. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't make it out. So we're going to. You want to try trivia and the, for well, the I'll, head I'll, of it? I'll call back maybe. We could even try that because I can't, I can't, I'm not going to be able to hear an answer. Okay. Yeah, you have okay. to. Because you have to, the, people out, the people at home can't hear him. So it's, well, obviously. And, I can't. And, and we apologize Sorry, for that. Sorry, and we apologize to him, to, to Bill there. By the way, I want to review uh, last week's winners. Why don't you do that? If, if I can. We have a couple of minutes. We're going to do a break, and then we're going to get Paul mm -hmm. from the studio audience We can on. talk about Penn's yet. We haven't gone into the Penn's. We have all that stuff yeah. that happened. And uh, Jim Rutherford's back, Bob. Remember him? <laughs> when I was a kid, I had Jim Rutherford's autograph. That's pretty cool. I did. Yeah, Lumpy's right. uncle. Thank you. Last week's winners, Mike from Arnold. Uh, we got him a pizza coupon from Perry Pizza, Perry the Pizza Man in New Kensington. Austin uh, was a new caller, and he was, he, was, he was here at the yes. studio. Austin is from Leechburg, and he was a first-time uh, <laughs> participant and we gave him a little bit of a bigger prize, so we sent him, or at least we gave him, a gift certificate for probably $25 to $30 worth of food from Matios Pizza, located, of course, in Brackenridge. Uh, Rich from Cheswick, another winner. I'm trying to remember what I sent Rich uh, out. Um, <laughs> and I do apologize, Rich. And we had uh, Rich from Freeport, who was a winner of a Novotny pizza a gift certificate of 25 bucks. So he's going to go out there. I know he's got a couple of young kids. I've had that pizza. Perhaps uh, with his wife and thoroughly enjoy themselves. So we congratulate our winners from last week. Okay, we're going to take a break. I it's, have something um, really cool for Paul when we come back. Paul's okay. going to love this. Right. Paul, are you ready? I have something great for you. <laughs> we shall see. All right, it is break time, and uh, apparently we're not going to hear back from... Uh, from Bill, yeah. Yeah, right. from Bill. So let's take a break, folks, and uh, Mike and I will return. Paul will be our guest on the next segment of the program. Stay with us. Mogi's Irish Pub on Leechburg Road in Lower Borough has 16-ounce Bud Light aluminum bottles for just $2.50 during all Pirates games. Stop at a Mogi's Irish Pub on Leechburg Road and enjoy a cold Bud Light. Here we go. Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Accidents happen. Are you prepared? You can be with a wide range of homeowners insurance options from Westmoreland Insurance Services. Putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call, 724-337-3557. My first book on sports is available not only through the internet, but at various local businesses in the AK Valley. It's Bob Tattern's Sports Minutes. Short sports stories, odd and unusual, fascinating and funny, only take about a minute to read. Go online to doubletriplebob.com where links are provided for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Word Association to get book information. Get your copy locally at Costello Printing in Tarentum, Blackburn's in Tarentum, Myrna's Brewery Outlet in New Kensington, or the Hot Dog Guys Lower Borough. What is it that makes a Husqvarna dealer a Husqvarna dealer? Well, 
Just look close at the engineering in our outdoor power equipment. We're known for high performance and reliability in everything we make. So is it any wonder your Husqvarna dealer is also known for high performance and reliability in everything they do. With a nationwide network of Husqvarna dealers, there's one just around the corner. Ernie's Tavern on Brackenridge Avenue in Brackenridge has 225 Budweiser and Bud Light bottles every Tuesday and Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Stop by Ernie's Tavern and enjoy a cold Bud Light. Here we go. And the folks from Tower Auto Sales offer more than 40 years of experience at the same location in dealing with cars. Pre-owned vehicles allow the sales staff at Tower Auto Sales to help you in the selection of your next pre-owned vehicle. Call Mike Fanto at 412-828-6202 and just buy it. Tower Auto Sales in Blonox. Okay. Uh, by the way, we did run a commercial for my book. Indeed. Father's Day is coming up. It's under 20 bucks. It's available if you heard the ad. Um, Show them how thick it is for under 20 Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's a lot it's of pretty, stuff. Over 300 stories. They're all one minute in length. That's all it takes to read them. Uh, the book is available at Myrna's, Costello Printing in Terenum, Blackburn's in Terenum, and with the hot dog guys wherever they may be yeah. on the road. Okay. So uh, we want to thank Paul for coming up again. Paul, and, uh, I, w I must throw this at you. 30 years ago today, which would have been June 9th, 1984, do you know what happened? June 9th, 1984. 1984. Can I get a couple minutes to think about it? How about this? The Penguins drafted who? <laughs> <laughs> that piece of dirt. 30 years ago today. Okay, I'm Penguins... in honor of that, I'm walking out yeah, too. Walk it out. The <laughs> Penguins drafted Mario Lemieux 30 years ago now, today. Now, why, why is it that Paul doesn't like Mario Because he Lemieux? walked out on us Penguin fans. He slapped us in the face, didn't want to play here, and just went in this cab and took off. And I hate his guts ever since. Paul holds a grudge? Ask Milo. Boy, she knows. And I, know, I, knew, I knew him. I knew Paul then, so this isn't anything new. Yeah. We've discussed this. And then they time. complain about all these other players, players with attitudes, and it's like, it's like he can do no wrong, and you know, I mean, I he I would invite him to my place for dinner. I would do that, but he's I just don't like his attitude. He does get a free pass around here, doesn't he? Yeah, and I'll also, ask, but it, well, the big thing was he saved hockey for Pittsburgh a couple so. times. Well, it doesn't make what he did right, though. He, I believe he's even come. <laughs> I think he's even said that he. He was only nineteen. He doesn't. He was eighteen. Eighteen. All right. Mario and I are about the same age. <laughs> is that thirty years ago? It's is that 30, thirty years ago today, Paul? Thirty years ago today. That was on fifty-three, I recall. I remember 20... watching it because Eddie Johnson did the uh, announcement in uh, French, also. By the way, when the Penguins hired Jim Rutherford, you know, you know, Lumpy's, my, Lump, Lumpy's when, uncle, right? Lumpy's uncle, Jim Rutherford. When the, Pirates <laughs> hired, the Penguins hired Jim Rutherford, I said, oh, obviously EJ said no. But anyhow, that's, you know, I guess he didn't want to come back. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's where I was with that. I, I just figured you'd like that about Mario. So, uh, but, and uh, what are your thoughts on uh, California Crumbs' owner after the race? I, th I think it was just he expected the win and, you know, the momentum. And I think it just. Everything caught up to him, and he I, just. Steve Coburn, I give him, I give him points for being honest. Right. It was that was one of the greatest sour grape speeches of all time, <laughs> and he didn't stop at his wife. I, and, and I don't know if you saw this, but his wife was kicking him. To yeah, to I get saw him that. To stop, and he turned around and said her name, and basically said, "Stop this!" And he goes back and he tears into everybody he can. These these cowards <laughs> not running all the races. And didn't and was, didn't uh, California Crumb then? Uh, I saw online he got injured or whatever. He got a cut, I guess. Underneath, and that's well, what caused. He, well, I don't know about that. He got boxed in at the start. The, right. The thought process was that I saw this beforehand that they wanted to get him out to the front because right. it would have taken all the decision making away from the jockey because they were a little bit worried about him because he had had one other chance and didn't ride a good Belmont. Mm. So his the initial goal was to get out front and stay there, which is what Commissioner did almost. Yeah. So close. But anyway, that's <laughs> that's a personal story. We'll get it. Right. But so when he went to go out, the, the one horse <laughs> and the three horse on either side squeezed him. And he, he wasn't able to get through the initial 
push at the start to right. get out to the front because there wasn't any speed in this race. No. So there was no rabbit to get out there to, that, that would set mm -hmm. the pace. So they figured he was the fastest horse to get out there. Well, the problem was, if you remember now, in, in, the, uh, in the Derby and the Preakness, he was in front at the end. He didn't right. have to catch up. And I'll tell you what, he put him in a good spot. He was out there, at the, he was out there on the outside. And with a kick, I think he could have got there, but he, of course, just didn't have anything left. And back yeah. to Steve Coburn, that every he was the only he was one of the only two or three horses to run all three races, and he was tired, and he just didn't have enough. Now, do you think the twenty horses should race in all three races, or keep it like it is? You can't. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. Right? You can't mandate to yeah. owners what to do with their horses. These right. are investments, and there's a and not only are they investments, there's a health situation here. I mean, you don't want to yeah. put a horse in. In danger just because you might be, and, and you know, and one thing he didn't mention that I think is, is something that I hadn't heard is that he's right that these horses that lay out and wait for the Belmont do have an advantage, especially a horse like Tonalist, who, right. who was sick and couldn't run in the prep races to get enough points to get into the Derby. This horse is good enough to be in the Derby. That's that's number one. And you can't blame an owner for not racing that horse when he's not 100%. Okay. He was complaining that, that these horses have an advantage late in the Belmont, you know, in the Belmont. But right. what he didn't, what he didn't, what he forgot to mention was that there's an inherent advantage for the winner of the Derby going into the Preakness because so many of the good horses lay out of the Preakness. Then right. the field in the Preakness is nowhere near as good as it was in the Derby. So, you know, he, he's got an easier. That's why there were so many that win both. Right. And and a, and a lot of horses, unless they win the derby mm -hmm. won't run the freakness just for that reason alone so you, there's an right. advantage there that puts you in the position to win the triple crown too yeah now if you don't win the kentucky derby doesn't it cost you more to participate in the next two or is there like a fee to well i think the fee is going to be the same for anyone it's just you know you i mean want, is it worth it maybe that's why you they want more money well yeah and, and and exactly what you know the, the, the thing mm -hmm. then is if you've run the derby you're probably going to only run one of the other ones i think only ride on curlin and General A Rod, I think only three horses had really turned it. He should might as well have been General Glue Factory, by the way, named after A Rod. It worked out beautifully. It was right. not a good horse. But I think only those three horses ran them all. Right. So you're, you're not, you know, and guess what? He finished ahead of those other two. He was the best one of all the ones. That but here's the problem <laughs> if you only let like he wanted, the, horse, the, the first 20 in the Derby are the only ones allowed to run the last two races. What are you going to have a three horse race? <laughs> Who wants to see that? I think they should. Yeah. Match race. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Maybe they should adopt the new uh, the BCS system. <laughs> Something along those lines. Yeah. I don't know. But I, so. you know, I, I think that Pat Forty, um, I heard today, he's got the best idea to spread them out and then you might have a better chance. Did right. you run the Derby the first weekend in? Once a month or something. In, in May, you run the Preakness the first weekend in June, and you run the Belmont on the 4th of July. Right. But now, the Preakness is willing to make the move, but the Belmont's not, because uh, they're a little strange in New York. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the way that works. Yeah, I'll try trivia. No. What do we want to uh, do, Can I do mystery profile, or am I eligible for that? I or? believe you are, because this yeah, will be we're in the new month. First, okay. So this will be your one and only crack at the mystery profile right. this month. Whose turn is it? I had uh, Tony. Okay. Must so you're on. All right, Paul. Here we go. I'll look at this TV. <laughs> okay. Your $100 clue. Matios brings you the mystery profile. Matios Pizza and Subs, Broadview Boulevard in Brackenridge Heights, right next to the district magistrate, Carolyn Bengal's office. And there's the phone number there on the screen, 724-904-7312. Get the Iron Man hoagie. It made an appearance here once. It was great. All right, Paul, here we go. Here is your $100 clue. I am the oldest major leaguer to hit an inside-of-the-park home run. Mm. Mickey Mantle. That is not correct. Right. <laughs> $75 That's clue. a good guess. It is. <laughs> I won eight batting titles in my league. P. Rose? That is not it. Damn. George is sitting back there. You know it? George got it. Okay, number three, $50 clue. I was the second player to reach the 3,000 hit plateau. Second player. Um, Clemente. No. Damn. <laughs> I played almost all of my career with the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> Willis Sargil. Uh, oh, God. Uh, I am the featured player on one of the rarest and most valuable trading cards in the world. Ernest Wagner. Ernest Wagner is correct. 
Sweet. Was that the Tinker Toy? This. That's the Tinker Toy. Okay. This day. That's when you pay Mike and I. <laughs> Paul, you're, Paul, you're anniversary boy today. Are you ready? 100 years ago today, Hannes Wagner collected his 3,000th hit. You know, there's a controversy about this. <laughs> All of anniversaries today, yeah. Technically, uh, Cap Anson, who was the first to get uh, 3,000 hits, in those days, they counted walks as hits. Okay. Somewhere along the way, they decided to take away the walks, and he finished technically with hits. He was five under 3,000. He was 20, 2,995. And a terrible racist, by the way. But they still credit him for being the first wow. to be in the 3,000 hit club. So baseball has something to get straight because Hannes Wagner, in that case, should be there. They, they can start with replay if they want to get some stuff straight. Try to work that out. Too, <laughs> anyway. Sheesh. Paul, okay. uh, Thank you. Okay. good run, but we'll get you a tinker okay. toy. Okay. So Paul got, Paul, we had two anniversaries for Paul. The, the 30th anniversary of Mario Lemieux's My drafting buddy. and the 100th anniversary, this date, 1914, Hannes Wagner's 3,000th hit was off Erskine Meyer, who, as we've learned earlier, yeah. if you were watching, is the only 20-win mm. pitcher to give up a 3,000th hit in the season. And played a lot of his career in the dead ball era. Yes. So, yeah. The Pirates seem to play in the dead ball era. They're the only ones. <laughs> They're still playing right. in the They actually hit now. I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they always they hit now. But, yeah. So we have, we, George is here tonight. So yeah, what, George, what's the occasion? We're, we're going to put George. Just stopping in to say hello, right? <laughs> George was in the neighborhood and decided to. Uh, I don't blame him. It's a good show. Let me guess. You got Leechburg tonight, don't you? What do you? Gilpin. Gilpin. He's, he's in the neighborhood. Exactly. Well. I'll tell you what, we do owe for Why don't we do a that? final break. Let's see if George wants to come on for a second and we can talk about the Penguins. A second. A second. A a quick, you got to leave, huh? Get out of there. Go ahead. We'll, we'll do, do it, it now. We'll do we'll it now before we'll the break. break. You want to put him up with you guys and use the wireless? No, it's okay. We're he's good. He's fine right where he's yeah, at. We're good. Why complicate George, things? George, it's, it's good to see you. Um, what do you think about, the, first of all, what do you think about Jim Rutherford now that we have you? Well, I think it's good uh, if they're going to stick with what they want, using him as sort of a stopgap. Uh, measurement and then uh, get the assistant uh, general manager groomed to eventually take over. Uh, it sounds like that's what they want to do, and I can be on board with that. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the other thing is we talked about this here, and I think about we, we talked about it, George, when you were here, was that um, if they put Pierre Maguire up there as an anybody but Pierre thing, and then they hire somebody else and it makes it worked. It worked with me. I was very yeah. happy to see Jim Rutherford walk up onto the dais just knowing he's not Pierre Maguire. That made me happy. Um, other than that, I mean, like I said, I remember him playing. And I got fond memories of those days when I was a kid. He was the goalie. But we do have to come up with a coach in fairly quick. Yes. Yeah. So, and do you have any suggestions as far as coaches go? I, I understand they're going to the general managers this meeting this week, which is in Boca. By the way, they never have it in you know Minneapolis. They're in Boca. And um, <laughs> like the little league does exactly. in Minneapolis in like early they April. Have it in Minnesota. But. Um, it, supposedly they're going to try to make a run at Babcock and see if they can't pry him away from Detroit, and, and that's yeah. what I had heard. And, and, you know, that's another reason you, an experienced GM, a guy like Rutherford that's been around and knows the other GMs could maybe make a move like that. And I, I think they're going to give that one solid shot, and if they can't get that done, then they'll have their search start next week. Right, and the name I'm hearing today, of course, is uh, Hines, the coach at right. scranton Wilkespear, which they got uh, Michael Terrian from there, and they, they got, Balsma. of course, uh, Dan Balsma from there. And uh, they may dip into that well again. But my personal favorite is Rick Tockett. You need to get an attitude, I think, like Rick Tockett. The Penguins uh, can be rightfully accused of being too soft, and they couldn't be that way under Tockett. The, my biggest complaint, and I've said that uh, when I'm on the other side of this you desk, it feels head strange head. being on, exactly. on this desk for once. But uh, it, it, the accusation and the charge can be made that they are a team built for the regular season where you just kind of cruise along. And let's face it, after the Olympic break, they put everything in cruise control and it came back to bite them in the uh, uh, end, you know, not getting by the uh, second round. I've heard people say that Bilesman's greatest strength was, was his ability to win meaningless regular season games. And I think that really may have. Okay, now I have a proposal for you. John Stevens was the coach of the Flyers for five or so years. Mm -hmm. 
Um, did, a, did a pretty good job there. His, his biggest problem was he couldn't beat the Penguins in the playoffs. He lost twice to the Penguins in the playoffs and got knocked out. Had pretty good teams in Philadelphia. He's got that flyer pedigree that you talked about. He is an assistant coach with the Kings right now, and he is one of the hot names floating out there. The teams are waiting to talk to him when the Kings uh, run is over here, which will be at the end of the finals. If John Stevens was a candidate and he came in, I could see a very easy jump to Rick Tockett being, being probably his top assistant because they had worked together in Philadelphia as well. Would that be something you could deal yes, with? Yes, and I hope the Penguin fans don't get... Uh, to what I would say persnickety just because a guy has a Flyers pedigree. I think we need that. Yeah, and I compare it to the Pitt fans who didn't want Tom Bradley to be defensive coordinator. My goodness, could Pitt ever use a Tom Bradley to be defensive coordinator just because Bradley had a long association right. with their rival Penn State. I hope the Penguin fans don't go down that path. I don't care who the guy is or what kind of uh, team or what team he was with. Let's just get past the second round of the playoffs. Then we can decide who we like and who we don't like. What they, I think the thing they have to do, and, and you talked about John Hines, and the only problem I would have with him is they're going to need somebody with that locker room the way it is that's going to command the player's respect the minute he walks in the door the first time. And, and, that's not, and I don't know if that's something that's going to happen with a minor league coach. And I think they need somebody with experience. And I, I would even throw Mark Crawford's name out there. Here's a guy that's won a Stanley Cup. And if you look at his resume, he's not that old. Um, he won his Stanley Cup in Colorado. He was only 34 or 35 years old at the time. They need somebody that's going to walk in there and have the respect of the players right away, and that's something that Rutherford's going to have to sift through. And padlock the country club once and for all. You have to, have to be. All right. George, thanks for the time. Okay. Hey, nice that's to be here. Awesome. I was at the Washington Township, and uh, I was on my way to Gilp, and I said, hey, you know, I'll stop in and see what's happening with the show. There we go. Well, we're thanks. still here. We really appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. It is break time, folks. We're coming back. In a moment, stay with us. Welcome to Buffalo Bill's Roadhouse, the place for big appetites. Their great sandwich selection includes the Geronimo, piled high with generous portions of meat and fixings. Their barbecue ribs are the best in town. Half rack or full rack, they don't come better. Buffalo Bill's wings are everybody's favorite. Uniquely oven baked, not deep fried, and yet so crispy. Your choice of 13 flavored seasonings. Grab a bucket for the big game. Eat in or take out, credit cards accepted. Buffalo Bill's Roadhouse, Freeport Road, New Kensington, across from Falderelli Square. For over 38 years and three generations, Arnold Furniture has been the area's favorite furniture store. We have over four floors of living rooms, dining rooms, recliners, bedding, carpeting, and so much more. You always find friendly personal service from one of the family. And our prices consistently beat the competition, plus free local delivery and free setup guaranteed. Visit Arnold Furniture online at arnoldfurnitureinc.com or stop in and see us today. AKLC Studios LLC is the place for your video and multimedia needs. Let AKLC Studios produce a unique television commercial for your business. At your location or in our studios, we're here to meet your needs. Ever want your own television show? Let us show you how. AKLC Studios LLC can even tape your special events and weddings. Whatever your multimedia need, call AKLC Studios LLC in Leechburg today. Professional quality at hometown prices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Hey, don't forget now with Father's Day coming up, you want to give a, a good book, Bob Tattern's Sports Minutes. It's available locally. You can pick it up at Costello Printing and Graphics in Terenum, uh, Blackburn's Pharmacy in Terenum, in New Kensington at Myrna's Brewery Outlet. And if you're going to visit the hot dog guys at their mobile stand on Bull Creek Road near the uh, Exit 14 interchange, they've got copies as well. It's under... Uh, 20 bucks and Father's Day coming up, last minute gift suggestion. I suggest that you uh, do it. <laughs> it's my book. It's your book, and it's a good book. And Thank I don't you. say that just because I like Bob, because I do okay. like Bob. Um, we got some interesting things. Let me, let me mention real quick, because I know I'm going to forget. We did look up Jim Tomey, and he's not played he's not, since 2012. Okay, so, so he, he didn't. That's just closer to the Hall yeah. of Fame then. Oh, by the way, and again, let me, if I get you, one thing. When um, A-Rod comes back mm -hmm. next season, right. he is six home runs away from the Willie Mays number of 660. He's got 654. The Yankees, in their contract with A-Rod, have promised a six 
million dollar bonus when he reaches 660. Wow. Six million. Then, if he reaches Babe Ruth, 714, another six million dollar bonus. But go ahead, Mike. We got like three and a half minutes. Okay, we're good here. Um, first off, uh, Neil Walker was originally in the Pirates lineup tonight. By the way, if you're watching on Thursday, we tape on Monday, so I'm sure you already know what happened. I got a feeling by the time you watch the show on Thursday that Gregory Polanco will be on the Pirates. I'm just yeah, got a feeling. On I that. hope so. Neil Walker was scratched tonight late, so he's not in the lineup. Josh Harrison's going to play second, and Travis Snyder's going to play right. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if Neil got hurt yesterday. Um, something must be up there um, for that to have happened. Now, it, I don't know if this is in conjunction with that or what. Uh, you know, maybe he hurt himself sliding into home when he knocked the catcher out of the way. I don't know, but he seemed okay the rest of the yeah. day. Okay. Yeah. Um, Polanco's not starting in Indianapolis's game tonight. Chase Darno's leading off and playing right field, and Polanco's not in the lineup. I don't know what that means either, but now every time you see him not in the lineup, you wonder. So, <laughs> could he be packing uh, his bags? Could he bags? be packing his bags and on his way to get here tomorrow? I, um, I, somebody told me yesterday that they said it wasn't going to be today, but it wouldn't be, soon, it wouldn't be that far after that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, know, I don't know what's taken them so long and what they're trying to prove with all this, but that's how many what times, I have. How many times can you return a player to the minors before you lose. You get, it's, 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 the, it's called how many options do you have? You have three options, and this is talked about all the time, how many options you have. But it, you can send a guy up and down 100 times this year, okay? Mm -hmm. 100 times, say J Jared Hughes, because he usually gets okay. bounced back and forth the most. If you send him back and forth 100 times, you used up one option. Next year, you send them up and down 100 times. You used up the second option. Oh, it's peace. each year. So you control the guy for three. You basically get three cups of coffee before then you become, mm. you run out of options, which gives, mm. it protects the player and gives him a chance to move on to another team where maybe he could latch on and stay for the whole season. So that's all that. Remember Cecilio Guante used to pitch here back in the 80s, and they'd be up and down, up and down. And mm -hmm. The farm team was in Hawaii. <laughs> now, it wasn't such a bad thing to be in Hawaii. <laughs> Because the Pirates are really bad then. You probably would have rather been there. But, you know, and he would up and down. And those, the, I can only imagine the plane trips that he would have back and forth. But, um, yeah, the, here's, here's the wording. Uh, Pirates scratch Neil Walker and say, reason given, quote, as soon as it becomes available, quote, that Rob Beard Temple says, whatever that means. <laughs> so I, I hope Neil's okay. That's a lot. the last thing they need. And we said they're coming into this stretch where they're really going to have to get some... Uh, and he's on a, he's on a, on a he's hot He's doing streak. well. And we, we Davis talked about isn't the, doing that bad. He, he got benched, and now he's back in tonight. Gabby played yesterday. They gave him a day. Right. They gave like a day off because supposedly his streaks are very similar to Pedro's streaks, that they can go, he can go oh, in, yeah. in the hole real he can fast. Go south and real quick. That becomes an issue with yeah. him. So we'll see. I, they, need to, um, they, need to, they need to get going here. It's, it's time, and there's, it's not early anymore. Yeah. Hey, uh, we didn't have any winners tonight except Paul wants for the Tinker Paul, the Tinker Toy uh, uh, prize on the mystery profile. So um, we on the I get to dig up another one for on next month. The anniversary Monday. of Mario's drafting, <laughs> Paul had to win. It's yeah, he he was. gets an autograph of Mario. Of the big guy. I have one. Yeah. <laughs> I do have one, Paul. You don't want you don't want it to. Oh, you should. Okay. All right. I met him once. He was very nice. Folks, we got to wrap it up for tonight. We thank you for. Tuning in Sportsline Trivia, and we're back again next week at the same time. I'm Bob Tatter. I'm Mike Fowler. And good night. Thank you for watching Sportsline, brought to you by Ace Hardware, New Kensington, AKLC Studios in Leechburg, Arnold Furniture, Fifth Avenue, Buffalo Bills, New Kensington, Fazio's Deli and Meats in Arnold, Highland Tire, Toretto and Natrona Heights, Matteo's Pizza and Subs, Brackenridge Heights, Resevich Family Funeral Homes, Lower Borough in Arnold, 380 Discount Warehouse, Murraysville, Tower Auto in Blonox, and Westmoreland Insurance Services of New Kensington.